Hi everyone, welcome back to the contact form 7 tutorial. In the last video, we discussed the first three steps of designing a contact form which involved installing the CF7 and database plugin, designing the structure of our contact form by writing HTML code and then testing the functionality of our database plugin. Now, in this video, we'll learn how to design the layout of our contact form by writing CSS code and then lastly, organizing that code using the code snippets plugin. So let's get started. As you can see, right now, my contact form looks pretty basic and simple since by default, the contact form 7 plugin doesn't add styling properties to the contact form. As a result, we need to write CSS code ourselves to design the layout of our form in order to make it look more professional and presentable. So, for that, I'll go to the customize section of my contact page and then click on the additional CSS section and write my CSS code here so that I can reflect the changes in my page in real time for better illustration. Firstly, I want to add some margin on the left and right side of my form. For doing that, I need to find the class of my form container. In order to find that, I need to go to the official CF7 documentation page and then scroll down and under the tips section, I can find the styling contact form link. If I click on this link, I'll be redirected to the styling contact form page where I can find different CSS selectors for my various form elements. As in my case, I want to style the whole of my contact form so here is the class for that. So I can just copy this class from here and go to my contact page and paste the class in the additional CSS section. Don't be intimidated by this WPC F7 short form. It is just the short form for WordPress contact form 7. Now, as you can see, by default, the width of my contact form container is 100% but I need to decrease it so that I can move the contact form to the center of the page. So, I'll give it a width of 60% and add margin 0 for top and bottom and auto but left and right so that it comes to the center of the page. Now that I'm done with styling my contact form container, I can start designing the layout for input fields on my form. For that, I need to go again to the styling contact form page and copy these CSS selectors from here and paste them here. The CSS selector input type is equal to text is for text input boxes and type is equal to email is for the email input box and the text area is for the quotient text area on my form. As you can see, I have another input field on my form which is phone number so I'll add another CSS selector here which is input type is equal to TEL. I have placed all these CSS selectors all together so that I can add its styling properties for all of them all at the same time. So now I'll add the font size 14 pixel to all of them. And then I'll add a height of 45 pixels you can see the changes in my form happening in real time and then I'll give some padding to the input text so I'll give some padding of 10 pixels I'll also decrease the margin from bottom I'll give it the value of minus 5 pixels. 
I also want to add some border to the input box. So I'll give it a border of one pixel. I'm using here this color, but you can use any color of your own choice. Similarly, I also want to make the corners of my box more rounded. So I'll add a border radius of 4 pixels. I'll also change the font type of my input text. I personally like the Poppins font for input text, but you can add any font of your own choice. I'll also give it a backup font as sans serif. Similarly, I also want to add some styling properties to the labels of various input fields on my form. So I'll add the label tag and I'll give it display as block. The display block property will add some additional margin at the bottom of these labels. So I'll use the margin bottom property to give a fixed bottom margin to all these labels. I'll set it to minus 20 pixels. I'll also change the font type of labels to pop-ins to match it with the input text. Similarly, I'll also set the font size to 14 pixels, which is same as the input text. Also, I want to increase the size of this question text area so that the user can type his question or query freely in this box. So, I'll write text area here and give it a fixed height of 150 pixels. Another thing you will notice is that if I select any of the input boxes on my form, the border around that input box disappears. But I don't want that to happen. For that, I need to select and change the styling properties of these input boxes in their focus state. For that, I'll copy the CSS selectors and paste them here. Then I'll select the focus state by writing colon focus. Now I'll add the border property to it so that the border is still there even in the focus state which is the selected state of the input box. I'll also mark it as input. So now you'll see even when I select any of the input boxes on my form, the border is still there. I can even change the value of the border to 2 pixels so that the input box which is selected gets highlighted. Also, the style attributes of the placeholder text on my form are similar to the input text by default. But I want my placeholder text to be a little bit smaller than the input text. So for that, I'll type double colon to select the pseudo element placeholder. And then I'll give it a font size of 12 pixels, which is 2 pixels smaller than the input text. Now I'm going to add some CSS code for the submit button. 
As you can see, I have added a new background color for the submit button. Also, I have changed the submit text color from its original color to white. I have also added the padding for top and bottom as 15 pixels and left and right for 40 pixels. And to make the corners of my submit button more round, I have added the border radius as 3 pixels. Also, I have changed the cursor to pointer and the display property as block. And to move my submit button to the center of the page, I have added the margin for top and bottom as zero and left and right as auto. Also, I have changed the font size to 16 pixel and font family same as other text on the form. Additionally, I have selected the hovered state of my submit button and changed its background color to a new color when I hover on it. So there you have it. Now my contact form looks way more professional and presentable than its default look. Now coming to the last step which is organizing our code with the WP code plugin. It's always a good practice to save our code in the code snippets section provided by the WP code plugin so that the CSS code that I have written here is implemented only in the page that I want and it doesn't affect the CSS code of any other page in my website. For doing that, I'll copy the CSS code from here and go to the WordPress menu and then click on the code snippets section. And then I'll click on the add new button to add a new code snippet. I'll add a custom code snippet. And here I'll select CSS snippet since this is CSS code and I'll paste the code here. After that, I'll give this code snippet a meaningful but a short title so that I can identify my code snippet later. I'll give it title as contact form 7 CSS code. Then I'll activate this snippet and save it. Now I can go to my contact page to view my updated page. So now our last step is also completed. However, before ending the video, I want to tell you that the CSS code that I have written in this video is not theme specific. That is, even if I change the current theme of my website to any other theme, the contact form will still look professional and pretty. Let me give you a quick demo to show that. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more, drop a comment, hit the like button and share with your friends. Your support will be appreciated. Thank you and see you in the next video.